Hello and welcome to our fourth video blog. For this one we've come to the heart of Middle England, to the town of Great Malvern, and to a pub that, like so many pubs that we've already visited in other locations, was closed down, left for dead, boarded up and derelict two years ago. And this pub is called The Morgan. It's now reopened as a vibrant heart of the community, uh, thanks to the Wye Valley Brewery who bought it in June 2009. And it really is striking what a lovely community hub it is uh, and it's very warming and perfect just before Christmas. Whereas we normally talk about uh, great cascales that are on sale on the bar, because it's Christmas, uh, we're going to be looking at bottled beers. One of the great things about British Real Ale is that it's seasonal and seasonality in food and drink is very important to us now. And whereas we see articles on wine about the best wines for Christmas and that kind of thing, it's great, we're drinking a lot of wine at Christmas. But Christmas beers and winter beers are actually different than the beers you can get the rest of the year round. So we're going to be looking at some beers that have been specifically brewed for Christmas and some beers that haven't necessarily been brewed for Christmas but are actually perfect for Christmas Day. Okay, so here's a scenario for a perfect beery Christmas day. People are coming around for lunch. They walk in, you take their coats, the first thing then is you offer them a drink. Now, normally you might offer them a choice of perhaps uh, mulled wine or champagne, but beer can do both of those things. The first one I'm going to choose is a beer from the, uh, the wine brewery. Quite confusing, pronounced wine, spelt W-A-E-N. Uh, they're from Mid Wales, and it's a brewery that we're gonna be seeing a lot of in the next 12 months, I think. They're, they're really doing a lot of things that are catching my attention this year. And this is a Christmas mild. It's brewed with cinnamon and cloves. So it's kind of, they've done a, a mulled wine job for you by creating a nice, spicy, very light drink just to kind of kick things off. You can smell the spices in this beer from about here. Um, and then when you taste it... And mild is only, this mild is only about 3.5%. So it's a very light beer, but it's always packed full of flavour. And there's a, a, a chocolate and coffee undercurrent to mild, which is very prominent, that really goes with the cinnamon and the cloves, the spices. It's just really warming. Um, I haven't tried heating this up yet to see if you could do it as mulled wine. Sometimes hoppy beers go very bitter when you try and do that. But this is not hoppy, so it might even work if you had it warm. Now, if you don't fancy the rich, spicy flavours of a warm mulled drink, you're probably going to be wanting some bubbly. You're probably going to be wanting something light, effervescent, biscuity uh, and blonde. And there's something else that can do that much better than champagne can. This is one such beer that fits the bill. This is from the Wye Valley Brewery. It's HPA, Hereford Pale Ale. And as we're in one of their pubs, I thought we should give it a go. But it's actually been one of my favourite beers for quite a while now. It's one of those that when you start drinking it, you have to have a few pints of it because it's just very, very Moorish. Um, we can see out of the bottle, it's uh, very, very pale, like champagne. It's quite effervescent, like champagne. Unlike champagne, you can drink several bottles of this before you start feeling too worse for wear. On the nose, there's lots and lots of, uh, of fruity aromas, a uh, hint of grapefruit and, and tropical fruit. And those flavours really develop on the palate. And then you get that nice, drying, biscuity finish that really gets your taste buds going. It's a perfect aperitif uh, or appetiser before we sit down for a full-on hearty Christmas dinner. Good Lord, it's my special Christmas blog guest, Mr Peter Amor from Wye Valley Brewery. Hello. Hello, Pete. All right. How are we doing? Good, thanks. Welcome to Malvern. It's nice to be here, yeah. Yes. Love it. I, I bought you a present for Christmas. Cakes and ale, dear boy. Some uh, special stout. And, of course, you'll have a cake to go of with Of course. It. Thank you very for much. Christmas. This is quite brilliant. She's, uh, she's brushed up a bit. She brushes up very well, Dorothy. Yes. And uh, this is a 7%... I, I think that's one they couldn't take to the Portman Group. <laughs> Imperial Stout. To celebrate your 25th... Anniversary. Anniversary. All brilliant. Herefordshire content. Barley... Hops a lot. Fantastic. Well, I've got a, a present for you as well. This is a, a very rare, unsigned copy of my third book, Hops and Glory. <laughs> <laughs> Good plug, Pete. Good plug. I shall look forward to reading that. I've read The Man Walks in the Pub very much, and uh, my son's reading this at the moment. I'm looking forward to reading this one as well. Yes, I would sign it for you, but it's worth a lot more on eBay without my signature. Is it really? It's oh, a lot I, rarer. I promise not to put it on it. Is it really? Without your signature? Yeah. Right. OK, then. Thank you very much. So, um, cheers. Cheers. You've had a, Wye Valley's had a very good uh, 2010. 
Yes, we have. I mean, it's culminated with um, winning the Radio 4 Drinks Producer of the Year, which is really, we're very pleased. We're very pleased with all the team and the gang there, and everyone's worked so hard. And it, hopefully it reflects our dedication to localism and quality. That's good. And do you think, um, I mean, has brewing generally, has British brewing had a, had a good year? I think the smaller brewers have. Um, I'm sure the, uh, the bigger boys still suffer. The pub closures carry on. Um, but uh, there's certainly that within the Seba broth, with the, the smaller area of the uh, independent brewers, they're having a good time. And, uh, and that's a reflection of perhaps the only bit, as you know well from the cast report, of the, the cast market is doing very well. Now, I believe you're down here to try some Christmas beers. And yeah. you've been talking about those, so uh, maybe let's put these on one side and have a go. And yep, all right. I've been looking at uh, trying to structure a bunch of different beers along the, the course of uh, a Christmas meal on Christmas Day. Right. So, aperitif starter. Um, okay. I've got a couple here, uh, a couple of candidates for what we might have with a, with a main meal when you sit down with the turkey and all the trimmings. Right. Let's see what you think of this one. Um, <clears throat> uh, St. Peter's. Winter Ale, uh, St Peter's Brewery, uh, not as traditional as some, a bit more designed. Very much into bottling, I yeah, believe. Yeah, I think about 70% of their volume goes abroad. All right. We don't see as much of them here, and they are really just a, a bottled beer brand. Can't remember the where they're part. based. They're based in Suffolk, uh, and it's a really nice operation they've got there. Mm. Uh, very boutique, really kind of stylish, and trying to break the, some, certainly some of the design cues of, of, of British beer, do something a bit more different. Uh, and this is their winter ale, uh, six and a half percent. Right, not a lunchtime drink then. Not a lunchtime drink, uh, well, unless not, it's Christmas Day. Unless it's Christmas Day, I fully accept that. With food. Yeah, and I think I think that's nice. I think the thing about a Christmas dinner is there's so many different flavours there. Yeah, by the time you've got turkey, stuffing, white sauce, cranberry sauce, all that kind of stuff, you need something that's got a lot of flavour on its own that can stand up to all that. It's well balanced for a strong beer. It's good. <laughs> OK, so we move from the dinner table to the fireside now for our last beer that we're going to be reviewing today. Um, so far we've shown how beer can substitute for mulled wine, can substitute for champagne. Now we're going to see how beer can substitute for uh, a brandy or a port. This is your... Beer with cheese at the end of Christmas dinner, or it's your beer if you prefer for just falling asleep in front of the Bond film with. It's a strong beer, it's 8.5%, it's Fuller's Vintage Ale. So cold because it was first brewed in 1997 and Fuller's that year decided to get the very best malt uh, and the very best hops that they'd used that year, make a special beer with them. And they've done it every year since and what's remarkable is that the beers have aged really well. So this is the 2010 version. Uh, last week I was tasting this alongside the 1999 version, both very, very different beers now uh, from the same original recipe, but both equally marvellous. So, so this is the new one, this is what it tastes like fresh. You can see we're serving it in a brandy balloon because this is a beer that, uh, that you should kind of really let warm with your body heat uh, and let those flavours develop. The warmer it gets, the more some of the richer, more subtle flavours come out. And it's just wonderful. I mean, it tastes like beer, obviously, but it, it competes with sherry or brandy or port in terms of that complexity and that fine, very delicate alcohol burn and, and, and richness and complexity. It's a really just absolutely wonderful. What do you think? Wonderful. Incredibly smooth for an 8.5% beer. There's no harshness there, it's smooth. Dry biscuit, Stilton. And this, who needs port or brandy? Wonderful stuff. Good choice, lovely colour. Well done, it's um, John Keeley from uh, Fuller's Brewery. Yeah. Well done. Absolutely right. So what we've tried to do today is show the full variety that beer can have and how that helps you over Christmas. There are so many great beers out there and at this time of year there are so many brilliant Christmas beers. There's such a variety, such incredible diversity and complexity of flavour. It's really well worth checking out. 2011, we've got lots to do. Um, we need to get to a wider audience, so we're thinking of producing a website, British Beer Video Blogs. So when that comes out, people will be notified through your own superb blog and we'll go from there. Um, so meanwhile, Cheers to 2010 and all the best for 2011. Yeah, all the best. Cheers. Cheers to you and cheers, cheers. to you.
Can't do another take after that. Starting to struggle a bit now. <laughs>